फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट हाउ टाइम्स हैव चेंज द एग्जीक्यूटिव विच टर्म इन द प्रजेंट कॉन्टेक्स मीन्स पोलिटिशियंस इन पावर हैज द करेज टू टेल द जुडिशरी हाउ टू पुट इट्स हाउस इन ऑर्डर बाय फॉर्मुलेटिंग अ कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट फॉर जजिस वट अबाउट द कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट ऑफ द मिनिस्टर्स एंड पार्लियामेंटेरियंस वट अबाउट द कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट फॉर द पोलिटिकल पार्टीज ड्यूरिंग इलेक्शंस ओफन फॉर्मुलेटेड बट ऑलवेज वायलेटेड एंड वट अबाउट द परवेसिव करप्शन इन द एग्जीक्यूटिव वन वुड बी इनक्लाइंड to tell the executive to practice honesty and uprightness before it preached but one refrains from doing so because the sad face is that the judiciary has deteriorated beyond belief and one no more feels morally confident in defending the institution look at the waning public support for the judges and the judiciary when three supreme court judges were superseded there was strong public protest against the move and there were lawyers public men and journalists prepared to stand up and be courted when there was the move the transfer of high court judges this was viewed in the correct perspective as a serious attempt further to discipline the judges this instrument was liberally used during the emergency though because of the censorship formal and informal the fact of the transfer of 16 judges did not come to light it was heartening to discover that there were brave judges in the high court who were prepared to pay the price for their uprightness the nation owes a debt of gratitude to them the full story of how the government has twisted arm of the judiciary is yet to be told facts remain hidden though there are occasional rumblings particularly by retired judges mr justice jagan mohan reddy has gone on record as saying that there was an attempt by the government to influence the keshwanand bharti judgment and that some judges were party to it we all know how an attempt was made by the then chief justice to review the keshwanand bharti judgment by the large bench but the move was hastily abandoned perhaps because it needed majority in favor of the review was not in sight and we all know what the supreme court did in the adm jabalpur case in which it was held that even the citizens right to file and liberty got suspended during the emergency we all know that dissenting voice of justice h r khanna which is a darkest period of indian polity as such and we all know what the supreme court did in the sp gupta case commonly known as the judges case the judiciary surrendered its final right of appointment to the executive one of the unstarted reasons was that some of the judges constituting the bench had more faith in the executive than in their own chief justice they critically talked in private about their judges and the government not only gleefully grabbed what it was given on a platter 
but started reducing consultation with the chief justice into a farce there was wheeling and dealing or casual consultation on the telephone mr justice venkat was not consulted about the elevation of mr justice rama swami now in the news to the supreme court the point is simple so long as the public was convinced that the judiciary was more sinned against that sinning at least the more upright people came to its defense but when they found that the worst enemies of the judiciary were some of the judges themselves they started losing moral fervor some of the retired judges did the rest they spoke openly day in and day out about the fall in judicial standards and position honorable chief justice was persuaded that one way of cleansing the judiciary was to transfer about 80 high court judges a contempt case was moved against him in mumbai but the judgment went in his favor then there is mr justice krishna ayer who has been speaking bluntly about his robbed brethren and their various acts of commission and omission the question of judicial accountability is a pertinent one the constitution put the higher judiciary on a pedestal a high court or supreme court judge can not be punished for laziness or inefficiency or both he can not be punished for his lack of knowledge of law all that can happen is some comments by a higher court or a larger bench and it is becoming increasingly clear that he can not easily be punished for corruption either he has to be impeached through a difficult process now made much more difficult by the supreme court through its ruling on the subject it is in this background that the law minister's suggestion for a code of conduct for judges needs to be viewed the timing is perfect public sympathy for judges is virtually non existent having rested all it wanted on matter of appointments and transfers the executive is further trying to humiliate the judges by focusing public attention on their more soft sides and the points chosen for the proposed code are empirically based stop